Good morning. I want to welcome you to the study for uh, May 10th, uh, Sunday uh, of 2020, uh, from the fifth book of, of, excuse me, the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation. Uh, the title of our lesson this morning is The Lamb and the Scroll. The key verse is uh, verse 9 of the fifth chapter and says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. The application this morning uh, that is the goal is that the student will give examples why Jesus is worthy of all worship and praise. As we start to look this morning at this uh, chapter, uh, we uh, go from what we studied in the uh, last Sunday in the, the fourth chapter, uh, where we studied uh, in the worship of God, the Creator, uh, to the worship of God, uh, the Son, our Redeemer, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, we're uh, studying, a, uh, as we looked in Revelation, uh, what is to come, uh, the things of the future. And uh, that is where uh, we turned after we studied uh, the churches uh, in uh, chapters 2 and 3. Uh, we're looking here at the end of the, the church age, and uh, that is going to bring about uh, very uh, immense changes in the physical world that we know and live in. Uh, however, we're given in this chapter a view uh, from heaven's perspective. And uh, as we learned last week, heaven's first and the most primary concern is uh, the majesty and glory of God uh, and uh, his worship as the creator. Uh, now we, uh, we turn to uh, redemption story. Uh, God's plan to redeem uh, fallen earth and, and fallen man and uh, how he's going to go about that and, and how that plan's been in place and, and will one day come to culmination. And uh, as we do that, uh, we, we see in this uh, how, how God is going to change a way that he has dealt with man through the church age uh, God has extended his grace to man. But uh, one day, uh, that, uh, that's going to be over. And uh, we'll see uh, God in, uh, as the judge, the righteous judge, and Jesus is the righteous judge uh, of man uh, and, uh, and uh, fallen man in particular. Uh, it, uh, this chapter begins the, uh, the uh, description that is contained in Revelation of that time. Uh, God is righteous, uh, and that righteousness uh, demands justice. Uh, he has been, through the church age, uh, long-suffering uh, and gracious, uh, but uh, an accounting is there, and uh, that accounting uh, will end in judgment, uh, we're taught in Revelations. The first uh, four verses are, are listed here under the title, The Scroll with Seven Seals, and I'll read those at this time. Uh, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. We we have uh, John here, the... Uh, the uh, writer of this, uh, the book of Revelation, indicating that he was given a vision. Uh, he, he had an eyewitness account of, of, 
what was going to take place in the future in heaven. Uh, and he is just in the prior chapter uh, been looking uh, at God on the throne. And uh, this first uh, verse here, he, he sees in God's right hand uh, a book. Uh, it had writing both on the front and the back. And uh, it was sealed with seven seals. Uh, the uh, word book is a translation of, of the word scroll. And that is what John was looking at in God's hand. Uh, in these, uh, the Bible times, a, a scroll was a, uh, on papyrus. Uh, it, it was a, uh, contained on one side uh, the, uh, the object, uh, the description, uh, as a book does on its pages. And on the back side, uh, something like a table of contents that uh, is in our books. And then if it was an official document uh, that uh, was very important, uh, like a deed or something of that nature, uh, in our times it would have seals on them which indicated the, uh, the genuine nature of the document. Uh, and uh, the seals were uh, made with... Uh, bands, uh, string, and uh, they were waxed, and then the, a signet ring was, uh, in many cases, uh, with wax was stamped on it so that uh, you know that uh, it had been sealed. It had not been tampered with uh, since the, uh, the author uh, penned it. And uh, this is what John was looking at. And... Uh, he next says in verse 2, uh, he saw the strong angel uh, looking, uh, proclaiming uh, with a loud voice. And this voice, we'll learn, uh, based on what's coming next, had to go to the ends of the earth uh, for it to be heard because of what is going to be said. Uh, and uh, that is who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals. Uh, and uh, no man in heaven or on earth nor under the earth was able to open it, neither to look on it. Uh, there was no uh, human being uh, then present, uh, no uh, created being, uh, uh, angel, uh, uh, no one who had died in the past, uh, none of the Old Testament saints. Uh, to, to open this book or to look on it. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this upset John because he knew what was in the book. Uh, this was uh, redemption's plan. And uh, so uh, he reacted pretty quickly. Probably he overreacted uh, because uh, uh, no one stepped forward uh, to do these things to read it and to open it uh, and to look upon it. Uh, some commentators uh, claim that this was uh, uh, Earth's land deed uh, with uh, details on it uh, about how uh, Christ will uh, regain his inheritance uh, to the earth uh, and uh, that it is a scroll of redemption uh, for that purpose, and uh, how he will usurp Satan and uh, the pouring out of God's wrath, uh, giving you the details of those things. <clears throat> the next uh, subject that uh, is covered uh, in the, the headings in the lesson plan today is the line of Judah and uh, covers verse 5 through 7, and I'll read those at this time. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, 
which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Here we have uh, one of the 24 elders that we studied about last Sunday who uh, uh, are uh, around the throne uh, there in front of uh, God's throne. Uh, who approached John as he was weeping and uh, basically tells him, John, you've jumped the gun. Uh, you've overreacted. Uh, uh, don't weep uh, because, uh, look, uh, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, uh, prevail has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Uh, our Savior, our Redeemer, uh, Jesus, uh, described as a, a line of the tribe of Judah and the root of David, and, and he qualified in, in both those things, uh, which are words uh, and descriptions contained in Old Testament prophecy, uh, because he was of the tribe of Judah, uh, and he was related to David on both his mother's and father's side, as described uh, in his gene genealogy in the Gospels. Uh, and uh, he met the description. He, uh, he fit uh, the description as uh, our Messiah, uh, our Redeemer, and uh, he uh, has prevailed to open the scroll held in his father's hand. John Father says he beheld in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, <clears throat> having seven horns, seven eyes, and uh, which were the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Uh, he describes here, uh, and, and Jesus has been described as uh, a lamb uh, slain for our sins. Uh, it's reminiscent of the the, the lamb that uh, uh, was uh, used uh, at Passover time. Uh, uh, it was required to be uh, uh, come into the house for a, a short time to be uh, a pet lamb, and uh, this is uh, the description that is is here. And it looked to John uh, like the the lamb had been slain. It was standing up. Uh, this was Jesus standing up, and he still had the, the marks of his crucifixion on him. And uh, the seven horns uh, and, and seven eyes, a, a horn is a symbol of, of power uh, in, uh, in the Bible, and the seven eyes uh, uh, is a symbol of uh, the omniscience and all-seeing and, and all-knowing uh, aspect of, of uh, Jesus uh, as a son uh, uh, of God and uh, as one of the uh, the uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and uh, also the uh, seven spirits of God uh, were, were aspects that, that uh, we look at, uh, which means total intelligent uh, discernment, uh, complete understanding, uh, and in control of all human history events. Uh, two characteristics, uh, complete power authority derived from his father, and complete knowledge of humanity were qualifications, and Jesus had them all for opening the book and revealing its contents. After that description, uh, the heading changes. Uh, Jesus took the, uh, the uh, scroll out of his father's right hand. And then uh, we have a, a worship service breaking out in heaven. Uh, John's worry uh, is no more. Uh, the one that uh, made him weep. Uh, the worship of all creation is the heading and uh, is described in Revelation 8 through 14. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps 
and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders and the number of them were ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. We, uh, as I said earlier, have a worship service that uh, uh, breaks out in heaven. Uh, it starts uh, after Jesus uh, took the book. Uh, the four beasts and the twenty-four elders uh, fell down uh, before him. And uh, they uh, had harps and golden vials full of odors. Uh, harp is, is probably a lute is associated in the Old Testament uh, with uh, praise uh, and uh, the honor uh, given from the playing of the musical instruments. Uh, the golden vials of incense are, are descriptions of things that uh, were close to the uh, um, the worship that took place in the uh, both the uh, the temple and the tabernacle, uh, and it describes these as the prayers of the saints. Uh, there are those who say that uh, they this indicates that every prayer ever lifted up to God uh, has uh, has made its way to Him, and. Uh, this is recognized by the saints and certainly uh, the Lord's Prayer where uh, we pray that uh, Christ's kingdom come uh, is, is being answered as this occurs. And uh, they had a new song. This is uh, not the song of uh, uh, creation, but the, uh, the song of redemption. Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. You know, John had a, uh, a job to deliver uh, God's and Jesus' message to the seven churches, and uh, that message was not always pleasant. And you would think that John would possibly wonder if, uh, if uh, some of these churches were going to make it and uh, function and, and do the job that they were placed on earth to do. And here we have an indication that maybe uh, some of them had in fact done that and done it well because uh, we have uh, the redeemed from every kindred, tongue, people, and nation uh, described in this uh, in verse 9. And... Uh, uh, that's exciting. And uh, then we have an indication in verse 10 of uh, uh, what the redeemed, uh, uh, what uh, honors that, that, that uh, they're going to have in heaven. And uh, uh, when he uh, describes that uh, this, these elders uh, made us... Uh, and to our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. And that's what the saints will do with uh, Jesus on his return. Uh, the uh, description here of uh, the voice of many angels uh, indicates a very large number, but it, it does not uh, indicate any particular number. Uh, the uh, description... Uh, 
10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. So, uh, in one of the versions of the Bible, it, that's described as myriad upon myriad. Uh, and, uh, and the Greek language, which the Bible was uh, translated uh, uh, from, uh, the uh, uh, myriad uh, is 10,000. Uh, and is said to be the largest uh, number in the Greek language. So we can't say with any certainty how many there were, but there were lots. Uh, the the loud voice, uh, they, uh, they, the song of uh, redemption here in verse 12 and 13, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. And uh, every creature uh, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and in the sea, uh, recognizing blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Um, we know that one day uh, Jesus will be recognized by everyone and everything for what he is, what he is and he is the, the Savior, the Redeemer uh, of, uh, of the earth pursuant to God's plan. And one day he'll reign. And the four beasts, they can do anything but agree. <laughs> they, they said amen. And uh, they all, the, the, the four and twenty elders, and uh, they fell down and, and worshiped him. Uh, and that uh, lives forever and ever they worship Christ uh, so uh, we see here the whole universe caught up in singing redemption song uh, because of the uh, wonder of all at uh, the nature of Jesus sacrificial love uh, the uh, study here in chapter Five indicates that Jesus uh, has authority and the power to uh, open the future and reveal it to us and uh, the great purpose of the uh, book of Reve Revelation is to look into the future and to show us the things that uh, are to come and so that we can look forward with certainty uh, to our future and to tomorrow uh, God's eternal plan is uh, being fulfilled right now and the world is, is moving in that direction to be set free from uh, bondage of uh, sin and death and one day uh, the imposter is going to be thrown uh, thrown out uh, and uh, we'll see this this happen uh, as uh, saints uh, thank you for uh, for your time today and for coming and uh, studying God's Word and specifically the, the book of Revelation. Uh, I look forward to the day when we can uh, we can study again together.